Uh, my name is Eileen Kelly, and you're watching HB Fit TV. So I'm a sex educator, and I run a sexual health resource called Killer and a Sweet Thing. Okay, so the name um, actually comes from a very misogynistic Too Short song that I heard, like maybe at a party in high school, and I thought it was catchy, the actual phrase, and I wanted to rebrand it. Just taking like autonomy over your body and I think the, also the idea that you can have two parts, two parts of yourself, so like this killer and a sweet thing, like what does that mean? Like you can go out and have fun with your friends but still be like serious in like a boardroom or whatever. It just I think goes to show that you can really do what you want in your life. Something that I wish more women knew is that they deserve and can have pleasure. <laughs> I wish more men knew where the clit was. Yeah, so Killer and a Sweet Thing, we use, we have a website, which is like an online platform, sort of like a magazine. And we also have different social media channels. So we have a forum um, where people can make anonymous accounts and talk to the community about different aspects of their sexuality. And then we also have Instagram. Something I've learned recently is I went to this sex toy convention last weekend and I learned that the majority of women's pleasure products are created by men. <laughs> Make a change. More, I mean, more brands are popping up now like Dame or Sustain that are founded by, you know, women CEOs and I think that's really awesome. Absolutely, because it feels like it's the toys made by men, even though they're for women's pleasure, it still feels like there's a disconnect and they're made for like a man using it on a woman or like made from the male gaze. Just like the colors they use, the actual like feel of the product. Um, yeah, so I think we're heading in the right direction, but it's about time. Well, I think your wellness really begins obviously with yourself and I think your sexuality is really at the base of that. Um, to be like mentally and emotionally healthy and well that you need to be comfortable with who you are on the most intimate level. I think that peer-to-peer -peer sex ed makes it a lot more relatable and therefore it's easy to digest and you actually get something out of it. Obviously I don't want to hear about like how to have safe sex from like my middle-aged male health teacher um, so that's what we try to aim to do is spread accurate information amongst young people because I feel like that's how it gets soaked up more. Well, personally, a lot of it was on the internet. I mean, I went to Catholic school my entire life, so I got a lot of misinformation. Like, it wasn't only that I couldn't talk about this in my house, I wasn't even getting anything at school either. So a lot of chat rooms, a lot of Reddit, I definitely like, yeah, like, a lot of misinformation and like practice probably unhealthy behavior even on myself and that kind of pushed me to want to put together a resource where I can find accurate inclusive information for young people. <laughs> the weirdest thing I own right now is I was gifted um, a anal tail. <laughs> so I'll explain that. And an anal tail is like a butt plug that's attached to a tail. It's mostly for fetish play, so I just have it sitting in my closet. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It's red and furry. <laughs> okay, my opinion, the best sex toy is the Womanizer. That's my favorite one, hands down. So it's not a vibrator, and so the issue with the vibrators is that they can desensitize your clit. And so what this does, it uses like almost air, and it, I guess it kind of like sucks on your clit and it's just amazing. Oh my gosh, so many sex toys. I think just do your research. Make sure you never buy anything that's porous because that's gonna trap bacteria and be hard to clean. Also, think about you're putting something like into your body. So a lot of these brands will try to cut corners and say that they're, maybe they use food safe silicone, which just means that it's like ice trays, like that's food safe. Like that's, you know, and you don't want that inside your body. So I tend to only buy toys that are medical safe silicone. So just really checking your labels, even reaching out to brands, doing your research before you buy anything. My favorite restaurant is Vinegar Hill House, 
but it's actually by Dumbo, so it's in Brooklyn. A beauty product that I love is my Kula Cucumber um, Sunscreen. I don't know that one. It's an organic sunscreen, but it's so nice. It like goes on really matte. I use it every morning. Self-care to me means putting your own kind of emotional well-being first and not feeling bad about it. I think in the spaces that already exist, just really pushing to make sure they're inclusive and they're as diverse as possible. Everyone has a story to tell, and I think it's really important to elevate the voices that don't get heard. <laughs> hmm. I think I want to be some form of what I'm doing already, so I obviously want to continue with sex education but I also have a huge love for the arts. So doing passion projects every year is really important to me. Um, we put out a zine recently and we actually did a video like a year ago. So ultimately I would like to maybe make a documentary or see where it all takes me.